Chapter 38 to 39, Departure and Arrival. Here, I'm sending you some company. Pride then proceeded to kill the remaining pirates, who were too weak to move. Then he sat down on one of the rocks to rest. Growl. When did I get so used to killing? So much that I don't even mind. His stomach growled with hunger. Pride is someone who gets hungry quickly and eats a lot. And he didn't have time to eat in between. He'd been on guard all day, waiting for the whole crew to gather. Actually, I could go into town and have my fill at some pub before my departure. Phew, let's just forget about that for now. I'm sure one of the women or one of the kids will recognize me. And they've probably already had a word or two about me with the locals. I'm sure my appearance there will only be a further delay to my departure. While these thoughts were running through his mind, one thing was becoming very clear to him. There was no way in hell he was going back to the town. So he killed the first animal that crossed his path and roasted it to a crisp. It took a while for the entire thing to be swallowed. Then he refreshed himself and cleaned his blade at a water source. He kept himself busy doing this for a couple of hours. It was already noon. The sun shone brightly. It was yet another hot summer day. Once Pride had taken care of everything, he didn't want to spend any more time on the island. So he started to go back. He made his way back to the place where his boat had been. After a while, he reached his destination. Phew, the boat was still a little bit in sight. I'm glad it hasn't been stolen, he thought as he levitated the boat out of the bushes and let it float in the direction of the lake. Without an extended stay on Cactus Island, Pride set sail. Once again, he crossed the path that connected the island to the lake. Pride had no idea how it could have come to this, but there were some local people standing on the shore and waving at him. It was clear that there were more than 50 people in sight. Some of them were among those who had been held, hostage. Thank you. Once again, thank you so much. Without you, our lives would surely have been a nightmare. And good luck on your travels, shouted one of the liberated. Simsa. I can't thank you enough for everything. You gave me back my daughter, my everything. I owe you forever. Take good care of yourself, yelled an old man crying and weeping. Such comments followed one after another. These were people who were grateful from the bottom of their hearts. Glad I was able to help them out, but it's better if I speed up. Their voices are starting to annoy me. Boom. He soared into the air as he and his boat were surrounded by a purple sphere. His speed increased abruptly and he headed towards the island's exit. After a short time, he managed to shake off the islanders completely. He was back on the open sea again. That way, that must have been the one. Peacefully he sailed to where his course was laid. The seas were calm and quiet. The sun was shining down on the sea in all its splendor and glory. The hours went by one after another. It was a very pleasant journey. Even if a storm came up, Pride wouldn't mind too much, because with his devil fruit, he could fly up very quickly or fly far into the distance. Eventually, it began to get dark. There was nothing special happening on the sea anymore. Pride kept moving at a steady pace. He didn't bother to sleep or rest. The risk of being attacked or exposed to other dangers while he slept was not worth it for a few hours of rest. A second sleepless night was not going to kill him. Eventually, the night began to turn into a day as well. At one point, after many hours, he saw an island in the distance. It must be the island if I'm not mistaken. At least I hope it is. Phew. Then I can finally fall asleep later. Pride got closer and closer to the island. Boom. Boom. At regular intervals, frequent explosions echoed from the visible island. Yes. From what I hear, I am quite certain. It has to be the two giants, Dory and Broggy. It must be more than 50 years since they fight each other. And no one has emerged victorious. That won't change in canon time either. Size. They couldn't even remember why they were fighting when they were asked in the anime. There were only about 20 meters between him and the island's entrance. As he got closer, he began to see more. In contrast to its name, the island seemed to be quite large. Even though he couldn't see the whole island, Pride thought it was quite big. The only thing that could be seen all over the place was that it was almost completely covered in primeval forests. Several active volcanoes further characterized the landscape of the island. Little Garden is a prehistoric island, as far as I can remember. In other words, it is still in the age of the dinosaurs. Not much is known about this island, except that it seems to develop very slowly. Because of the extreme climate, the dangers posed by the dinosaurs, and the duels between Dory and Broggy, no human being could or would want to stay there for too long. As he always did, Pride hid his boat in one of the bushes after entering the island. I definitely need to get a ship in the near future. He walked towards the noises, which grew louder with every step. As the two giants were in the middle of the island, the path to them was not short. Along the way, he encountered some prehistoric creatures that wanted to devour him. But Pride was tired and didn't want to pay attention to them. So he used the simplest method. As soon as he noticed an animal coming towards him with his observations hockey, he activated his conqueror's hockey to knock it out. I'm very curious indeed, as I've only ever seen dinosaurs on television, but I'll still have plenty of time to see them up close. 
The noise reached a crescendo sometime later. The whole area echoed with the clash of two weapons. They were close by, branch after branch. Pride brushed them aside with his arm. Soon, he was standing in a larger clearing. Not far away from him, two huge creatures were staggering across the ground. The sun was still shining over the island, even though it was close to dusk. On top of that, the prevailing wind was blowing with a light breeze. Two giants were on display. They kept attacking each other. One used a huge sword that suited his size. The other used an axe, also custom-made for him. Every time they crossed their weapons, they grinned and laughed. For more than 50 years, they have faced each other. But never has anyone won. So far, it has always ended in a draw. Each time they traded blows, the sound of their laughter echoed through the room. Even though it might sound relatively normal to them, Pride found it extremely annoying when they were laughing. For a normal or weak pirate, it would certainly be like a long-lasting sonic blast. Oi, shut up. You're making way too much noise, Pride shouted in annoyance. The two giants stopped for a moment as the scream rang out. Then the two behemoths turned around and looked at the other side. Just as I thought, they really do look the same as in the anime. Even though they're about 50 years younger now, their appearance hasn't changed much. Both were over 10 meters tall and wore Viking clothing. The only difference between them was that Dory was armed with a sword and had a black beard, whereas Broggy was armed with an axe and had a blonde beard. H -h 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 Dory. Was that midget talking with us? At the sound of Broggy's voice, the pair burst into laughter again. Their laughter grew louder and louder, even causing small gusts of wind to rise. Sigh. I did warn you. Ha ha H -a. As the two giants took in Pride's reply with amusement, another rumble echoed around them. Boom. Pride, moving with tremendous momentum, suddenly appeared before Broggy. The giant Broggy could not comprehend the situation at that moment. A black-covered fist struck him across his belly, or more accurately on his Viking armor. Boom. Broggy flew for a distance of 30 meters. Due to his size, he destroyed everything in his immediate vicinity. Forests that had been in place just a few seconds before were now in ruins. But a short time later, the surface shook as Broggy had risen to his feet. But his armor, which had survived so many battles with Dory, had been damaged beyond recognition by the imprint of a fist. You are the strongest human being I have ever met in my life. That was an unexpectedly strong punch, H-A-H-A-H-A, Broggy said, looking at Pride with a keen eye. You have to fight me too, came the voice of the other giant Dory, who looked at Pride convincingly. As I thought, even in the anime, one can tell that the giants appreciate and respect true strength. So are these two. Pride had to grin. The giants annoyed him with their noise and their remarks, but they also were much more durable. With pleasure, compared to Broggy, Dory had time to prepare for the situation. He watched Pride intently. His brow furrowed. He did not take his eyes off him for a single second. Boom. For the giant, it was unbelievable. One second he had seen him, the next he had lost all visual contact with him. It was as if the man had just vanished into thin air. His eyes widened in shock. The unknown man suddenly stood in front of him. He could not follow the movements of his opponent. Before he could think any further, he was struck by a blow from a fist. It was covered in a layer of black matter once more. Without really being able to react, he was hit in the face. Boom. Dory slammed into the ground with full force. A large crater emerged. The crater in question extended for several tens of meters into the depths. KRKRK, KRKRK. Another unsettling sound rang out a few moments later. It came mostly from the giant's movement in the pit. Dory, rubbing his cheek inconspicuously, glanced in the direction of pride. Oh geez, how can you have more strength than the two of us with your tiny size? Pied sight. The two of you are just too weak. Ha ha Eche. That's the first time we've heard that. But unfortunately, it's true in this case, laughed Dory. Pride had no real problems approaching the two, knowing that they were good guys if he could trust the anime, of course. I haven't eaten for a while. Are you hungry? They both laughed. This time, Broggy replied. Eche haha. There are some very, very delicious dinosaurs on this island. Then he turned to the other giant. We've been so busy with the fighting, we haven't had any food either. Skewer sounds good. Pride grinned at that. They're really easy to befriend. All right, I'll do the hunting. Can you make the fire and prepare the barbecue? A what? They both said simultaneously. Sigh. Forget it. I'll take care of everything. Then Pride took a couple of trees, chopped them into pieces, and piled them on top of each other. Just as he had done in the old days, he rubbed two stones together with all his strength and speed until sparks of fire came out. A short time later, the fire was lit. Don't put it out, said Pride, turning around. I'm off. See you soon, he added, waving goodbye. He went on a hunt and killed a number of prehistoric animals that were otherwise only familiar to him from fables and history books. Sighs. At first, I was curious and excited to get a closer look at them. But once I was standing in front of them, 
it wasn't that interesting anymore. Maybe it's because this world has sea kings and other similar beasts. Pride grabbed the heads of two lifeless beasts of enormous size. He dragged them back to where they had been. There, the two giants were waiting for him to return.